All right, guys, so our final topic here, we're going to give a brief spoiler warning here because we're going to be talking the Bad Batch Episode 3. Now, in my opinion, there's not really a whole lot to spoil because, it, I mean, it's a prequel, and it really depends on how much, like, really what you consider a spoiler, man. Like, cause I, I don't know. I haven't found anything really spoilery at all throughout the entire series so far in the three episodes. Like, no. what would you say about that, Ray? Do you think there's anything yeah. that's, like, mind-bogglingly you know, spoiler? You know what's going on. It's, like, post-Clone Wars. It's pre. It's like when the Empire's forming. It's, I think I mentioned last week or something, it's interesting to see how the Empire kind of starts out from, like, a seed and grows into what it is. But, yeah, there's really not much, like, to spoil. I mean, it's just a story, you know? Right, yeah. And that's a, we were talking about this on stream, which, again, like, unfortunately, you guys won't see because I had to take <laughs> it down. Um, not for any bad thing, but like I said off the top, the, we had audio problems Tech that issues. we didn't really know about throughout the whole thing, unfortunately. So, nevertheless, I think that is the, the show, in my opinion, it's like its biggest potential is to actually explore the empire rising stuff like the rise of the empire yeah you're seeing it from like the transition from clones so like i'm sure we'll see eventually in the show stormtroopers and like in this episode you know you see those like super clones that are or they're not clones they're wearing clone armor black clone armor but they're just people you know yeah and i think that's kind of showing you the transition from like the clones which are these amazing efficient killing machines to just random people <laughs> yeah and that's that was my biggest gripe with this too so if you're not familiar with the what's been going on here like in episode two tarkin shows up to the camino base where they make or camino planet where they make the clones and he's coming there this makes no goddamn sense to me like i'm sorry but it's like it's one of those things that like i keep i was mentioning on stream to go back to something you can't watch so i'm gonna guess it's a good thing i want to reiterate it my biggest complaint with like clone wars the show itself and then just like it, it it's just there's logic problems. There's yeah. just things that happen just for the sake of like, well, we have to, we, we need them to do it for some reason. Or yeah, it's got to look there. cool. Or whatever. Yeah, like whatever it is. And it's like Tarkin shows up here on Camino, questioning the validity of the clones. And like, is it worth their time? Are they worth their money? And it's like, dude, for one, y'all are the empire. You make the currency. Right. Like literally in episode a... two, that you have the clone guy who's trying to leave the planet and like, they're trying to get the, him and his family off this other planet. And they go to use their Republic credits and they say like Republic credits aren't good here anymore. You need to get it converted to you know Imperial currency. Yeah. So it's like, you literally make the money for one. So there's, there's no amount of money that it should be a problem here when you're you the built people a make, fucking Death Star. Yeah, right? exactly. you end up building two Death Stars for two. Christ's sake, yeah. and all these freaking Star, Star Destroyers. Destroyer, like, it's insane. The Executor, yeah, yeah. So they come here like questioning whether the 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 clones are worth their time and money, and if they're efficient and all this stuff. And it's like, dude, you just use them to take down the Republic. Right, like, you use that them. answers your questions right there. Yeah, it's like you. you what do you in the Jedi? Like exactly, the you literally use these clones to take down the Jedi Order. Like, and they they did it efficiently. Like yeah, they, they, they did literally did. It, so it's like it's it's just it's a logic problem in my opinion. Where it's like, it, and I don't know if it's really them to blame because, or if it's kind of George Lucas to blame for introducing the clones because. They do have to explain why the stormtroopers weren't clones in some way, right? Yeah. Like, they have to explain the transition. So, like... I'm doing a weird job of doing that, though. I get why they have to try to do it, but I think they're coming at it from a wrong way. I think they should have had something happen to where... Camino gets blown up. Yeah, where yeah, it's like, like they something. can't... They physically cannot have yeah, clones like, anymore. Yeah, exactly. Because they even mentioned that uh, at the end of the episode... We're jumping around a little bit, but towards the end of the episode... Because that uh, the Empire is now looking to not use the clones, the the Prime Minister on Camino is worried that they're they're going to lose their job essentially, right? Because like their job is to make the clones. If no one wants the clones anymore, they're going to be out of a paycheck essentially, in the most easiest way to explain it. Yeah. And so they go to and like he makes the comment that like Django Fett's genetic material is running low. That they they don't really have enough to produce like super clones that's what they kind of want to do they i'm getting the vibe that they want to make more clones 
that are reminiscent to the Bad Batch. Yeah. Like superior beings in some capacity. Over the, the regs. Over the regs. But they don't have enough genetic material from Django to do that. So, they in the really end... just, like, hit him up either. <laughs> yeah, right. They can't, they can't really do that. So they're gonna... They made the insinuation, at least, that they're just gonna take one of the regs and just use his genetic material to repurpose yeah. it. So, I'm sure that's gonna cause conflict, though, with the clones. I don't know if it will, though, because of the inhibitor chips. So, like, I don't know where they're really going with that. Because, like, yeah. the clones shouldn't really care since they're all programmed with those chips. Like, they wouldn't even really know someone was missing if you made them not know. You know what I mean? That's the other thing you, they kind of play fast and loose with is, like, how much does the inhibitor chip actually influence them? Like, how much free will do they still have? Right. You know, that they, they, they play that kind of fast and loose in all reality. So I'm yeah, I'm curious to see where they go with that. And uh, I think the greatest strength, again, is going to be actually diving more into the rise of the Empire. But elsewise, I, I, well, I say that because, honestly, after these three episodes, we still don't really know where the show's going. No. Like, it's following the Bad Batch. They kind of set up a little bit that the, the core group of characters here, uh, minus crosshair they state that they miss crosshair so like yeah. it seems like they're setting He's up brother yeah exactly so it seems like they're setting up for them to go and retrieve crosshair and take the inhibitor chip out and etc well and you see in this episode too like when uh crosshair shows back up at the barracks that the the bad batch used to use but now he's with these other soldiers He's kind of looking around and he's seeing like the stuff on the wall and uh, all that. And you can tell he's kind of like, damn, like maybe I do kind of miss these guys. He looks sad. Yeah, there he is. That's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. Like he goes in and you see that they're at least insinuating that he is actually having some internal conflict. It, yeah. Yeah. But again, that comes back to the question, well, how much influence do these in inhibitor chips have? Right. Because they were able to crank his up to 11, essentially. To, to get him to turn on them, you right. know, to follow orders or whatever. Yeah, good soldiers follow orders. But speaking of which, he's fuck, he's brutal. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. But two, that proves my point about the clones being super efficient at what they do. They So they go out here with this squad of people, which this is another good point, too, before I get too far ahead. This, like elite squad of regular people who are now, you know, would be stormtroopers, right? They go in there and one of the guys say that he's, the empire has given him more than the Republic ever has. Like he has essentially a job roof over his head, food to eat, whatever. And that was more than the Republic ever had did for him. So they, they give you some, in, like some insight as to why someone would join the empire. But, they also show you that they do have their own co internal conflict with the actions of the Empire, because when they get sent, this crew of regular people here, they get sent out to Saul Guerrero's encampment that you yep. previously saw. And they wanted to see, like Tarkin wanted to see if these regular folk led by Crosshair would finish the job. And yeah, it was kind of like a, a test form, more yeah. or less. So, but when they get there, that same guy who said, you know, the Empire was great. Like, they did yeah, more, like, more for yeah. me, whatever. But they go there, and Crosshair is, like, gonna kill them all. Because he's his whole thing is, like, you know, good soldiers follow orders, whatever. And they, the guy even says he's just, like, we're not, what did he say, like, assassins or something? Yeah, he says, like, yeah, like, these are civilians. Like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up to be an assassin or something. Along those lines, like, showing that, a dark episode. It is kind of dark, but it, it <laughs> proves my point in that scene that the clones are superior. Yeah. Like with the inhibitor chips, they follow the orders. Like right. with those inhibitors, like think about it. Those in the, the inhibitor chips in Order 66 literally made, they, and they touched on this in the first episode. When Order 66 happened, all of the clones who had fought side by side with all the Jedi turned on them on a dime. Oh, like within seconds. <laughs> yeah, as soon as Order 66 happened, boom, they start killing Jedi. So when with these regular soldiers, though, they have free will. Yeah. There's nothing making them like fall, like carry out orders. They don't have brain implants that are forcing them to do things. Yeah, exactly. So I just noticed too, Crosshair got a new helmet. He did, it was, yeah. But it's, it's the same kind he had before. Yeah, it just didn't have that little round eye thing. Yeah. 
So it just didn't have his crosshair. Yeah. yeah. That was the only thing. Um, uh, but yeah, it was because I, I noticed the same thing too. I was like, because I'm I'm expecting the same thing that you were kind of talking about before. Like we're gonna see a slow evolution of the armor into stormtroopers. Yeah, I, I mean, think, you saw that from phase one clone troopers to phase two. It's like slowly kind of morphing into the right. And you see it with the, this crew of people, like the mouth plate and everything, and like the little like they look much more like stormtroopers here. Yeah, they than, still have the single visor versus the separate eyes. Yeah, but. that's that's the only real difference here at this point. And then they're kind of playing with it a little bit too, because like Crosshair has one single, he doesn't have like the nose. So it, yeah. it's just like the first I like division. his helmet. I think it looks cool. Yeah, it looks good. I'm trying to get it back on camera here. But he has like a Boba Fett, like a little like scope visor that comes down to Yeah, the rangefinder. A rangefinder. There we go. I can't even find it. There's I know what you mean though. Yeah, it for whatever reason won't show. It's right there. There, there we go. Is just the one single slit that looks very stormtrooper, very, very stormtroopery looking for sure. But yeah. nevertheless, it completely just proves like the logic gap problem where, like, obviously the clones are better suited to be your army. Oh, yeah, for and sure. so it just doesn't make any sense. To me. Expensive, like, just, yes, but yeah, efficient, like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And y'all make the money, print more. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, just do it, man. It's ridiculous. Anyway, where do you see like the show going though? Like because like I said, with the actual Bad Batch crew, I guess we could touch on that for a minute. You actually get to see like you brought something up here that it was very reminiscent to episode two of Mandalorian. Yes. So you brought that up because talk about that real quick and then I'll, I'll I'll bring my point up into it. Ship malfunctions, land on random planet, crazy monsters on random planet, gotta figure a way to fix the ship, figure out a way to fix the ship and it's kind of the same sort of thing. I mean, obviously with different characters, but the concept I think is pretty similar. It's a similar setup. The setup's the same. Yeah, there's the a monster and Yeah. But the, the difference is Baby Yoda caused the chaos. Yeah, none of that would have happened if he wouldn't fuck with yeah, those eggs. He was eating the eggs and stuff. So he caused the chaos. But in this one, the young person actually saves the day. Yeah, Omega, yeah, comes like, to the rescue. Omega actually like through. like gets the the energy canister thing they needed for the, the repair of the ship, the capacitor, yeah, that she got it. Like so it's like is a nice dichotomy there. And it actually shows I like that they're making her useful and not just being some like annoying little kid around and I actually do really appreciate the fact that no one's giving her a hard time. No. no. Like everybody on it's the ship, kid. yeah, everybody on the ship though could just be like your classic begrudgingly like Oh, just stay on the ship. Like, we can't have you get hurt. Like, yeah. but they're like, you're your own person. You want to come you're with part us? Of the squad. Yeah. That's fine. Like, let's do it. Just stay close. I like that. Because they could just take an easy way out, making her just like annoying, like kid or whatever. And like, they do, you know, they're kind of mean to her, but in like, from a good place mean to her, like they don't want her to get hurt kind of thing. But they're yeah. just like, nah, like you can come, do, do, do whatever. It'll be interesting to see if she gets like her own set of armor and stuff. Yeah, like I said too, like she grabs that box of uh, crosshairs armor, and I could, I, I just assumed she was gonna like at least take his gun or something, yeah, helmet or yeah. yeah. And that was the other thing I brought up too is like, why were they wearing these little face mask things and not just their helmets? Yeah, I don't really. understand why they did that because they they've shown in other episodes of like Clone Wars, and I think he, that they they can use the helmets in space. You want to see though that they have like emotion and like i don't know something like that i think is why like because the the helmet it's, it's like on the point. mandalorian it's just a helmet yeah but they do a great job of showing emotion with mando they do. they do they do a great job with that but not everybody can do it yeah. but that's that's probably a good point just having the their face being visible would i guess prove useful to some degree yeah but anyway surprisingly i've actually been like really enjoying the show yeah, no, it's good. Like I, it, I didn't it, think I would like it as much as I do, actually. Yeah, I really had no expectations for it, which is probably helping. Like, because I like I didn't have any. Yeah, you like, were going in like this. Better be good. Yeah, I had no desire for it to be good or bad. I was just like, okay, I'll watch it because it's Star Wars. Right. I'll give it a shot, and mainly too because I, I've said this numerous times now. Like that final season of Clone Wars that came out on Disney Plus, I was actually quite surprised with how good their CG environments got. Yeah. Because I've never been a big fan of the character design of, like, the Clone Wars and Rebels and all this stuff. For But I will say, 
It looks better in this than it ever has. It really does. For the character models. They, they don't look as cartoony, all boxy. They still have that same look to them. But, but they, it's better. It's way better. Like, they, they look like... I can tell that's Tarkin. Right. Like, I, I like it looks good. And then, like, the, the Bad Batch folks, like, they actually, like, they don't really... They look completely different. They do. Like, surprisingly, they even made them look like drastically different than the regs do even though they're the same face yeah like right. they did a they did, they did a good job stepping up the, their game with the character models but right again what really made me like want to watch it was just because the environments they look incredible yeah like this little landscapes that they're in like that is like top tier animation like yeah. it looks great it really does there's scenes like when they show them flying through space especially where it just looks like part of a live action show almost yeah no it really does like it looks really good, and especially like when they're on a planet that has like a bunch of water or snow or trees and stuff. Like that shit looks. The first good. episode looked great. Like yeah. the first planet they were on, it looks amazing. Yeah. So if you haven't watched it, I definitely say go watch it. So John, you <laughs> haven't watched it yet. So what what do you what what are your vibes here? Like what are you picking up from what we're putting down here? Making you want to watch it anymore? Where where are you at with it? Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. It's it, you, you guys. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys are enjoying it. That makes me, I guess, eager to get to it. Um, it's just, again, it's finding the time. Is is it, do you feel it's geared more towards just a general Star Wars audience? Or do you feel that it's more geared towards a younger audience? Like for kids, is it intended for kids with just things that, other that adult star wars fans can enjoy or is it more because because my impression of clone wars was that and again i'm working my way through that series was that in the beginning clone wars was really intended as like a kid's show there's a lot of one-off episodes that don't play into an overarching narrative because that's kids don't pick up on overarching narratives throughout multiple episodes um but then Clone Wars kind of developed over time into a more, you know, geared towards adult or at least older Star Wars viewers. So what's what's the what's your read on that? It's definitely geared. They know their audience. Yeah, it's, it's not brutal. Geared, it's not geared towards kids at all. It's brutal. Yeah. OK, it's really not. Nothing okay. in any of the episodes have. I once thought like this was like. Like too childish, kid, childish or too kid yeah. friendly or anything like it. It actually is like Rick said. Like there's some brutal stuff. Like that like scene, scene where like with the the clones and or the soldiers and the rebels, you know, where they have to kill them and they straight assassinate people. That's yeah, like, like yeah, and you see it happen. Like they just they straight like Crosshair killed the guy who refused just to shot kill him. them. Just yeah. shot him point blank. Then like yeah. it just it all happens. Like it's. It's quite brutal. Like, and it really is. Like, it's definitely not. Your, it's definitely. I know you haven't got to it yet, but it's much more the final season of Clone Wars. Like, Ahsoka and Maul, those four episodes. Like, yeah. they definitely know their audience. Like, because, like, granted, when the show first came out, it was obviously oriented for kids. And George Lucas has always made Star Wars for kids. So it's sure. always going to have that element to it. But. It, Again, they know their audience. Like yeah. they know that mm-hmm. the kids aren't the ones watching this. It's a well, and there's a different thirty year old men like us. Yeah, there's also a difference between writing a show for kids and then Kid writing friendly. a show that's just kiddish. Like mm-hmm, it's just yeah. like you know that you know. I think Pixar kind of was one of the first companies to really catch on to the fact that you can make a show for kids. But not have, but make it enjoyable for adults as well. So yeah, yeah like a family <clears throat> film, a true family yeah. oriented thing. Like there's stuff yeah. for kids, there's stuff for adults. Sure, I, I would say the show qualifies for that. If anything, it's more adult so far than most of. Clone but then you got like was. the soft moments with Omega and like getting her own room, and there is a couple soft moments in the other episodes with her that kind of like lightens the mood a little bit. I would say. And, but I think okay. that kind of stuff though is hits more emotionally for adults than it would. Yeah, for kids. yeah, because you understand. You're like, oh, this kid's never had like a family. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, that's actually more in there for the adults almost. I would think, like oddly okay. enough. 
So I yeah, I would definitely you wouldn't have to worry about that. At least so far, these first three episodes, and like I said, the first episode being like an hour long, and then the next two being a half hour. We're at like feature film length of content, and it's True. all been good. Like there hasn't been this episode, you could see someone calling it a filler ish episode, but it really wasn't. There was character building for Crosshair and for Omega, like right. heavy character building. And then even some more overarching plot stuff with Tarkin and the prime minister Camino. Right. So like there was actually a lot wrapped into it for a filler esque episode. Do, do we know how long this first season is? I is do it, not know offhand. Yeah, I don't know. Thirteen is it twenty-two episodes? I can see if it's been announced because I am really curious. Sure. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, if 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 I don't get my act together <laughs> and get to watching it, like, how, how am I going to be able to just binge the whole season in a few weeks, or is it one of these things where I'm going to have like a full twenty-two episode thing to try right. and catch up on later on? Which is a see. daunting task. Oh, I know. That's why one of the reasons I never wanted to go back and like watch Clone Wars to completion. Because yeah. like I always tuned in for like once Maul became a thing, I watched it. Like yeah. I, I watched all these key moments, but then I never like sat through and watched it to completion because like whenever I tried to do that, there were a lot of episodes I was just like, eh. Right. Yeah, you get good. you kind of zone out and start doing other stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've noticed, at least for me. But with season two, it got much better, and I'm I'm really enjoying season two so far. But like, I mean, God, we we talked about earlier in the show, but I I I watched that show Dark, which were hour long episodes. In the past couple of weeks, I watched that show Dark, and then I watched Invincible. I got caught up on that. I'm trying to think of what else. I've watched a couple of movies. Like episodes. it's just ooh. they really buried this in this 16. article. 16 episodes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just saw that. No, no, no you're good. Like, literally, like, look at this. Though. This is so annoying. I hate when websites do this. Like, the freaking headline is how many episodes in total? And they have this broken down, like, here's this, and then you go through this, and you're like, okay, more, and then, oh, there it is, finally. Yeah. Like, Jesus okay. Christ, dude. And it's, lead with that. You're right. Spill the yeah. beans. So 16 episodes and they're all like averaging. If you take out the first one, they're like 30 minutes long. So yeah. maybe with maybe like 25 with credits. So yeah. Like typical animated fare for the most part, but they have been a little bit longer than your typical like 22 minutes, I would say. So right. Right. But yeah, highly it's recommend nice that they're it. letting it's nice that they're letting them they're not, I mean, it used to be 22 because you had eight minutes of commercials you had to fit in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and it's nice that since they don't have the commercials, since it's on the streaming platform, they're letting the storytellers have that extra time back to. Yeah. Right. And it Tell flows a lot better wanted. too. It does. Yeah. Because they don't does. have those random breaks that they have to, because a lot of time they had to write the story like to accommodate Around, those ad breaks. Sure. Like, and it's like, God. Yeah. I'm so sure. glad we're past that stuff nowadays. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. at least with you know this kind of content. So, but nevertheless, we're gonna call it here, guys. So, Rick, where can everybody find you online? You can follow me on Instagram at Sir Rick Metz. I haven't been using it a ton lately, but I'll try to update it a little. There you go, John. Where can everybody find you online, sir? Uh, I'm over at Nightwing underscore K on Instagram and Twitter, and so I'll have a oh, I got a freezer. I have uh, it was I have some stuff up. Yeah, it was brief. It's not like the old. I'm hoping the days of Mr. Freeze are long pet calm. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> right. But yeah, come over and check me out there. Uh, let me know what you. Uh, let me know when I should if I should start watching Bad Batch like immediately. Come tell me I'm an idiot for not having started it yet. Yeah, I don't think we're quite there yet, but it could happen <laughs> soon. If something crazy happens. You'll, I'll be the first to tell you for sure. Like, dude, you gotta okay. watch it. But right. nevertheless, right now, I would highly recommend it for anybody who is a fan of Clone Wars or Rebels because so far, I've been kind of more impressed with it out of the gate than I was with either of those shows. Yeah. Just out, you know, for the first three episode wise, this is far superior, like 100%. So, nevertheless, you can follow me simply at Sir Rob Beefo here. And do not forget, that's on every. You know, Twitter or whatever. I don't really use them all that often, but I've been trying to use the gram a little bit more. So you have, you have. I, I've been trying, I've been trying, mainly just to promote the show, and that's really the only reason I have any of them anymore. Is just to try to 
try to get it out there. Try to get it out there to all you folks, you know, whatever. But speaking of which, you can submit topics and questions to the show here by emailing us at honestandoneducated at gmail.com. That's honestandoneducated at gmail.com. Do not forget that uh, this show is every Monday. So like and subscribe and go find it on the, the podcast form of choice if you need to catch it on the audio format every once in a while because you can't have YouTube open. Go subscribe to the podcast. Just search Honest and Uneducated on Spotify, wherever. It's all there. Then every Wednesday, our collectible reviews go up there. So as I said off the top of the show, Kylo Ren Force Awakens was the one I did recently. So that's on the channel now. And again, that's every Wednesday that those drop. So stay tuned for another one coming out here in like two days. So, But with that down, that'll, that'll do it for us here today, guys. So thank you all for watching. Again, like and subscribe. Do all that sorts of fun stuff. But until next time, take care.